making tighter, is it harder to get behind running that jeep? Probably. That's my question. I, laboratory. I don't need big I mean, my guess is you don't need to tighten it, you just need You're talking about adding a naked component to that right there. Yeah, we have now two receivers he, on Now you could keep it and go out and run a little concept out there. Exactly. Right. Well, mm -hmm. We could have him running with a route. Mm -hmm. And if you guessed wrong, <coughs> he could you'd have a place to unload the ball. Let's see, for him, for your guy, I, think, I would think for your guy right there, he's not guessing wrong. He's going to keep he's that, keep and he's ball. out. I he's mean, and it's... He Off. Well, see, I'd hand that off. As a quarterback, I'd hand that off every time because he's not playing. He's, there's no shot of him tackling the back. No, because he's, he's, he's stopped his he's, he's stopped his feet. And the reason yours is too back is because of the variety of things you want to do with it. But you're not basically a tight end football team in comparison to full wides and three mm -hmm. wides, right? Correct. See, our second best football players are tight end. That fullback kid there, 42, yeah. one of our best, better football players on the okay. game. I got you. That makes sense. And we didn't know, we didn't know that until about this game. So, uh, we didn't know he was one of our better football players probably until the end of the season. But we never even utilized him. But we got two good tight ends now. I mean, we'll be able to utilize those guys. We, we actually do. We've got two of them. This is what I want to do right here with Naked. That left tackle cannot go down to Same thing with it, the fullback or with the tight end or any of those guys in that spot. I see a little more G here. Let's see, that'd be our main call. This would be 18 force for you, right? This would be 18 force for us, or 18 arc or 18 release. Mm -hmm. It's really concept. It's called out. See, they're, they're, they're rotating the other way prior to the most of this game. Three and safety strong. Let's 
So that'd be club technique with the helmet of the right tackle outside. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The read's clearly going to go out when you do that. Now the read would go from number one to number two. Number two played out, the ball's going to go down the heel. We we have not been able to get away with cutting the two technique. We just they read us and they push us, so we, we don't use that now very much. How many numbers you see going back in this is just when we did cut these twos, that's where we have problems. Because they were we weren't getting that run down. Maybe it's just the coaching part of it, but being able to run them down a lot of scrimmage. six yards, right. which opens up lanes, and you think that's a big down cutback, and it's not a fucking cutback. Right. It's no different than what I'm I showing you guys, you know. Mm -hmm. If you have an imaginary tight end, he's one yard outside his tight end, and that's right where he made his cut. So well, why is that any different a path than what we just got through doing? It, it isn't. It isn't really any different. Well, we hear what that center's hanging out with that right hand. I would have treated the front side guy as a down, and I would have brought it on. So I would have put the right back on 42, bring the right guard to the nose, and the center would have worked a combination on the 42 in case they ran a stunt. Because you know how they go down and pick, you know, linebackers with noses and pick yeah, yeah. ends with, you know, with linebackers, and I try to stop that with, with that concept. Now we're doing it with this obvious this is different ball handling. Try to see this court. It's the same, same side. side. So now they can't always say, well, you're always going to run the stretch away from the back. We'll run two That's backs. That's correct, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, that was just a lateral drop to the quarterback's got to bring it back over on your landmark. Step stuff to the right tackle with inside foot. Yep. The tight end not running his. How about the back's course there, coach? Premature, or is it? I don't know. At least he pressed before he read it and then he got it down the hill. He did one of those five and shut ups for me, boy. I'm not even saying it's not true. I'm not sure this is the best steps. But I don't know. You would be? Uh, the players. That's a constant part of that leg work. Always. But I used to teach them. I didn't feel that bad. Back 
backside yard here, stiff arm chop, right? Stiff arm or chop. You know, what are the parent? I mean, when you say you have both of them, use both of them, what are quick things you give a, a rookie that's coming in here to difference between the lateral and stiff arm? Or you, like you said, you, you see it and you tell them which one to do. Because there are parameters when you say, here's these are the type of looks or the type of three techniques you want to stiff arm prepared to chop. The grabbers, I want to chop. The non grabbers, I want to stiff arm. Okay. And each week we'll pre decide today is stiff arm day. Today is chop day. You know? And so I'll just hit that quickly in our meeting before we go out there so that they know we're going to try everything. And then if somebody starts grabbing and we say, hey, you know, because that's the way you want to get it where they make the decision based on what happens. Stay away from this. I just I don't, I don't think it has enough width for the play. Almost like a draw, you know. Where oh, I see what you're saying. You, this does not give you the stretch you want. Right, and, and, and the thing that would have to give me uh, the cover up is that we do it in pass. He lines up both sides, so they they got to play. They'll know which way the run's going. They won't know which way the QB's going, but they'll know. Uh, they won't know run from pass because the formations are going to be identical to the concept. We just won't have nine in there or this guy will be drawing the edge. We wouldn't put him over here. So I'd love to run 18 right over there. I mean, I'll take all that I can fucking get. And you, you saw a lot of three wise in this, didn't you? I mean, uh, three man lines. You think the thinking over here was to take the quarterback away with this one? You yes. think that's what the defense's thinking was? That's what they're trying to do is they're going to try to be able to chase the back down from behind and have a quarterback play, get two off the backside edge. Okay. Or if we bring a guy over, have three up, like right there, to have three off the backside edge for the pitch play in case we bring somebody over the top of the pitch. I'll tell you one of the things we've done with gun. It's all been pass, and a little bit of run, all pass. If we bring him out and then shift him late, you know, so that they can't set the blitz the way they want to, because they like to bring the two to the side of the back. Yeah. So if you're in turn protection, which I know Steve is another thing we want to talk a little bit about, probably that concept of turn. By moving him like that, they can't change the width. There are times mm -hmm. you know, come time to do that. So that could cover the back as well, right? In the running game. Yeah. You have a tight end set and a weak side set. Slide the back, move him. Yep. Slide him over there right after the quarterback gets up gets up there. And then replace 42 with a tight end. pocket protection with our tight end so that they can't tell it's one back turn compared to two back pocket set. We teach our tight end the role of 42. You see what I mean? So mm -hmm. they can't tell from the personnel which, which one of these systems is going to come out of. Which has helped us. Base personnel on the field and playing without a three four. So many of these, and there's a four man. So you call that a G over here? Oh, uh, no, it's going to go off to the right, so it's just, yeah, G to the front side. Mm -hmm. Three tech oh, lines. Oh, no, we're running through. Okay, we're running away from the tight end. Yeah, G. And there's a cutter having a hard time with the backside shade. He got stuck.
I said I just stay up on those. I, I, I can't get away with it. I, I, I wish I could, but I can't. They read me too good. Good job with the right tackle coming up out of belt that week. Left guard you just had outside right there. Yeah, shorted it. Thank you, Coach. I think I'd pull this one. How about the left, how about left guard, guard center combination? Left guard is too shy. I'm just fighting this. See, you're, you're doing nine as a release player. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, you spotted 43 as the mic player or the yep. mm -hmm. box side. so that I don't fuck around with Sifton off the one he's reading. See, I'm going to get in the way. So I see why you push it on the front side. I just don't know what terminology is going to get me to push that with my tight end over here where 90 is. I don't know. None of, none of our systems do that. It's 19 release without a pullback, right? It is. But see, when, when you use that term, uh, the tight end has the support, pullback has 43. I don't have 43. Right. So that, that, that term and that concept. It's like a nickel release. call for you here, isn't it? It's, it's a nickel, except when I run nickel to the tight end, he's responsible for the first backer in the box. So right. he's got the backside. But now I'd be sifting the right tackle. And in sifting, I'm messing up the read. So I've got to have another term that gains me a guy that way. So it's where great. you are. When I run it to the tight end. Right. We'll do it. I just got to figure out what, we have, what phase it fits into. Seems like it's hard enough to get a little penetration to the open side on, a, on these cocked ends. You know, I live in that on 19 week, 18 week all the time, so my guys do that pretty good coming up. Is this bad here? I don't think so. Uh, you know, I think his helmet isn't quite the right spot, but let's look at it when we get closer to it. Yeah, it's not wide enough, see, he's not stretching. That's why the defender's pushing back to him. And then I'd widen the G a whole bunch. Guard's got to go. Yeah. This would clearly be an extended tight end because he, he's got support element. Mm -hmm. I just got to come up. 
off my term. I want to deal with this backside. That's what I got to do. I'm not sure my guy wouldn't pull out one of these fucking balls. Yeah. He's not frightened. He's, I mean, he, he fights. I'm sure you got into if he can't tackle the back and the ball off for his rules so that he's not pulling everything. Because if you can put it in his hands, he might say, you know what, well, they can never tackle me. I'll just keep it. Yeah, we were worried about the support player inserting inside and him not being able to get to it. But you, you never would release him under 74, would you? Yeah, sure. Unless it was a he screwed himself in the box. Exactly. If not, he'd have time and distance so he could chip through. See, we never worked outside. the combination on. Yeah, I know you didn't because he wasn't a tight end. But I think that's what you want to do here. We, we probably would not combination this either if we had our tight end extend his motion. So. Yeah. But the way we teach it, and I'll, I'll take you guys there as soon. I don't know what I'm, I'm sitting here getting all the info on you. <laughs> Time for number 10, go ahead. What do you like your steps here? You know, the right tackle is, you know, you know, fucked up there. He is, he is all fucked up there. Yeah. But the guard's hat's pretty close. He's a little bit, a little wider. And I think the center's one way too wide. He got away with it because yeah. he stepped over. But I think he's got to be a tighter mesh. Well, 
I'm always talking about, you know, the motion guy, locking backhand, put your hat outside, see how he's going over. And I know he's a wide out for you, so that's not fair, but we can put our hat on the outside and lock a backhand, and he will skate to contain. Right. Mm -hmm. By doing it this way, you see, he bites back into you, throws you out, falls back in, makes a hit. Mm -hmm. And we go through this with everybody, because that's just the way it happens. Is the GM backside here good for you? The leverage, so the point I was making this morning, yeah. it's the leverage of the step when they go to put their hat across that they lose the leverage. See how he gets up under his pad? Mm -hmm. and I got the same problem. I, I, I know I've got to work awful hard on that. I've got to. You have a slight oversplit here, too, the same rule I have. Tackle on the read here. Yeah. When he's in. Well, we you know as we he were progressing here, it was kind of like, hey, when you're man, man call man, make him man, open it up. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Go to two and a half. I mean, he's got the helmet on the outside. I mean, you think right there, this could right there could go outside, right? Seems kind of. Or no. Yeah. Or are you are you getting a no read on this and going to the next down line? Yeah, this is a keeper for me. I'm saying on the right tackle. Okay. The back three. Right tackle. Uh, I think. I think uh, at first his read is bounced, and then as the guy played out, he, he's jumping when I'm jumping, and it all gets fucked up. <laughs> That's the problem. So what, do you, what would you tell the back? Your jump cut inside. Uh, you know, we, t we I would tell him this. Your first read is outside. If you then feel you've misread, make a hard left and get down in there and make me two. Make me three, make me one. When you do this, you just compound the problem because usually the real good team will get you for minus four here. You know? mm -hmm. But the right tackle has caused the problem. That's the one I'd like. Right. His feet have got not back into the ball, right? And yeah, so he got yeah. You fucked it up, right tackle. Now back, here's how you got to solve it. If you aren't sure in the read, get north, get down here. I think we got a uh, club technique by the right tackle here. So we're going to fall back and make a putt right there. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about it and fit it into your group here, real quick. Okay. And here's, I think, the way I'm doing this. And it, and it doesn't matter really whether this is under center or not, right? I mean, nope. it's the same place. No matter what the front is, no matter what the front is, if the weak safety's down, we're going to respot. If the strong safety's down, we're going to respot. But that's the way we teach you up front. So the rest of the court is not going to matter. It just matters as to how we declare the players. So let's do it out of a three, four, or an under front. You know, whichever, whichever you want. So he'll go to there if it's there. He'll stay there if it's there. See what I'm saying? One more time, both points on. Okay. If he's down, he'll be there. If he's down, he'll be there. So that's how we teach it. Now, this guy sometimes plays both ways. you, you got to be careful because you can't always read him. But let's say we start with this one, and we have a backer on the ball. So first thing I would teach is backer on ball, 
course. And the safety is a whole issue. Which side is he on? If he's strong, he belongs to the fullback strong. If he's weak, the fullback has might. The fullback, <clears throat> really in theory, never wants to get extended over here. Obviously, the shotgun. Mm -hmm. You don't want to get far because you're going to enter mm -hmm. off this rig. Mm -hmm. Your, your read is going to take you in or out off of that, that guy yep. that we're going to club. But we don't know when we get up there until the center declares that one. When we see it like this, we try to do that. If this is over, then we do it this way, we club. If we do that, there is no club because we're going to knock it out. Okay, And the fullback's going to enter on that one, or if it was this one, Spot to that. Thank you, Rocky. Appreciate it. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, again, I'll take it too tight. So that, that's the way that one's done with Buck on Fall, Backer on Fall, whoever that, whatever your name is today. Sam on Fall. What do you call that outside Backer to? Sam. 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 Okay. Sam on Ball. Force is Force. One question, Coach, just before you move on. When they, when they, when they uh, uh, bowl it, minus the backers, safe, strong safety down, okay. okay? At what point does that right guard with a shade nose, at what point does he come off of that knockout technique on the five technique because the backer's so far back to work? I, I, I try to push it if I can. The only time I come off of it fast, the only time I come off fast, if he hits me in the chops. If he comes up, I got to come off. So I never go back to him. I will try to stretch the play because he has got to come to me at some point. And when he comes, i got to leave. i got to leave. Mm -hmm. Now, it's out of this front that we always double alert this guy because it's out of this that that world comes with that one down. So you got to be ready. So that center may end up on that center too because mm -hmm. he's got this one, but he's he may hit that guy on the way. That yep. kind of clear up that issue. Now, if the backer is off Sam's off the ball. Here's the way Denver does it. And I think if I had to put in one way, this is the other. And I'll take you through these. So now it's all of these other defenses. Where could be that, could be that, right? We've seen both of these today. Could be that, could be that. We've seen all of that today. Sam Backer is off the ball. Denver automatically arcs the play. Play was called force. But because they don't want to teach it two or three different ways, anytime the seven is inside, he arcs to the force player. It's great for strong safety blitz teams and things of that sort because now the fullback doesn't have him. And the tight end can eat him up right now. Mm -hmm. See what I mean? With no penetration. So it's 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 easy. And the fullback wants to stay as close to eye as he can now because he's going to go to that guy through that lane. Does that make sense? So what we like to do now is work the combination back here and read this one. So we don't really care because we're going to run off him. We're going to read off him as best we can. Sometimes some players make us triple that. We don't like to because it's tough for the fullback. So he's got one, he's got two, and he's got three. So what was called the same way is blocked based on backer on, backer on. And a seven technique. Okay. If you have a nine, you can't release it because he can't get to the next level. So he mans the play. Okay. And these two pinch the play, and the fullback enters whatever he sees. And you run down the pipe of that hole. If you could get the strong safety outside or inside, weak side or strong safety, it wouldn't matter. Now the fullback's clean on the player off the three. And you, you go on either side. What you're able to do when you do it the Denver style, because they don't want to teach it all the different ways, 
we have a set of rules for force, a set of rules for arc, a set of rules for release, and release and arc have to do with motion or no motion consideration. They call it force and they adjust it to the difference. I think that's the way I would go about it. And I think I can flip you in right in this spot because this is kind of where we are in, uh, in the sequence. And it's out of this that you're talking, you know, four minute, short yardage, Things of that sort. All purpose play. Right. Now, one of the things we found is the best of those for us is also to do it this way. Because now the extension of this is just like the wide zone reads. We get him out here, and he's got number one. Could be from the secondary, could be the linebacker on the line of scrimmage. And now he's got number two. And we have a buck on or buck off rope, right? This 3 4 defense would say he's his. If he were off, he's back here, then he's got either a secondary supporter or that guy when he gets over there, and you don't know what he's going to do. So that gives us a tool that fits, you know, all of those. And we just tell ours it's delayed, and that's why we call it release. But the release word you may or may not want, but this is the way I think I would start to play. Teach you all that. I think I'll throw that cut up in and start right there because I think we got enough of this up to get started on. And then we'll come back to that. That makes sense? We okay? Yeah, yeah, that's how I remember you when you were at Denver to coach teaching that. Exactly right. <coughs> it got changed a little after I left and then Maybe just a little bit overhead. Okay. Okay, Let, let's think us through the segment. Now, You're all we're trying to ball. do is decide is he on the ball or not on the ball? He is now on the ball. The buck is on the ball, right? So it is a force element. So the right guard can go through. The fullback's going to enter off the five read. He extends because he got the buck to extend, right? And 51 really belongs to fullback and them, right? The, the right guard and the fullback? Yep. Because they're running the blitz over here. Now, why were they blitzing over here in your mind? Because they didn't start yet. Because they're, they're thinking we're trying to run force only to a stagnant side. Well, we don't let that happen because we don't see this as a field boundary issue. Now, you wouldn't matter here to you because if they were into the boundary, they'd be running up the field, wouldn't they? For you? Yeah. Yeah, I think more so orientated for us, more field boundary than per se formation call. Okay, I'm just saying, because of the way we did this motion, it's the same for both of us. We're saying the same principle. 51 really doesn't belong to us, but we never let him run through. Now the fullback becomes a cleanup player. The back tackle knows with two people outside of him, he's going to get a pinch, so he's going to do the cut right now. Have stepped the fullback with an all the way back to 54? He would have had the three played out, but the three really started in there. So, you know, his mindset doesn't tell him to do that. Would you agree that, that that's a strange looking zone dog? Yeah. Because they're trying to get a three guy to be the container from where? Inside. Yeah. He can't get that. I mean, he eventually gets there, and the fullback ends up hitting him, which is fucking being a football <coughs> player. Yeah. Uh, now he's got the secondary reporter, so he's one. So the fullback's going to read number two. If this is a spike team, no, it's not a spike team, so the fullback's going to read the guy over the right guard. Right guard got stuffed, man. He got his ass stuffed right back into the seat of the thing. Tough to read that fullback, isn't it? Because, huh? That's the right guard's fault, man. He's my best player. Right. Here's the club out technique from an up. We use it on weak, we use it on release, we use it on arc, we use it on everything from up and down. So this he didn't is leave the, his ass in too long. This is the liability of 
for letting the center work backside and putting the guard on his own right now. Is that correct? The mismatch that you can have that. Now, luckily, the fullback made a great fucking decision. He said, right there, I'm in trouble over there. Penetration, I'm going to get up under it. The back followed him. He pushed on into the lane, and we played hard and played hard, and the back went down the hill, and we made seven. And guess what? He shot up and went on back to the fucking huddle. Now you got a backer. Oh, no. Nope. Now we did a reverse. So they think we're going across here, right? Even with a boundary, they think we're going across. We're not. We're coming back over to here. The tight end work combination because there's no secondary player down. You guys would arc this, correct? Your tight end? Chip it. Chip the end. See, we, we would double him up to the next thing to ensure no penetration. Now the right guard gets it done, so it's an easy read for the back. Much easier for the fullback here, coach. Much huh? easier, much easier. Oh, much easier. Boom. So you're just letting your fullback right here be extra. Here's what we tell. Back or roll. Here's what we tell. And we tell him this on 1918 week two. And think about it. This is cutting edge now. This, this, this is, because nobody's doing this in football. We just learned how to do it. We have one guy that does pretty good, and every now and then you'll fuck it up. If we were running any play, to a tight end or not to a tight end, and that three went out, and our fullback was tied to that. Because really the guy he has, when that goes out, he plays out. Mm -hmm. The ball ain't going there. Mm -hmm. So now when we make it a tight end play, it's no different. So here we come over, here we come over. I'm reading him. He's hanging, and I'm outside. He goes out. I'm searching. Look at the theory of what happens. As you watch him, you can see that the defensive guy, he's blocking himself. And the fullback becomes the extra helmet. So what I'm saying, I don't know whether you can get this taught or not, but why does it help us to do it with the guy who is a tailback? Right here, if you were the tailback, where would you go on wide zone? Outside of that or inside of that? It don't matter, but you're reading it like a runner. He's actually blocking a guy that's already blocked. How about the guy that he's got? Does he know whether this tackle and tight end handed because there's no secondary player? And that's because of blitz alignment. You know, they're blitzing off the back edge of the two guys. See, back to actually tell back, tell back it's tighter here. Let's see. It's just. It does look strange. It looks strange. But he's running the bend route right there. Does look different. Clear for the tight end now. In your case, the other back, right? Mm -hmm. Could be you. Club technique. No back on my club. Well, they're in trouble on the back door for you, though. We had QB on right here. <coughs> We were reading this, we shouldn't read it. And there were two against this team. So, I mean, how are they going to, they can't, how do they defend you? Well, if you're in the gun reading that. Yes, you know, athletically, if you knew how talented those two guys are, they're both number one draft choices, and, and they both are much better players than some of the guys over here, except for 28 and 7. <laughs> you know, they figure, hey, he'll, play, he'll get them both. But you, you can imagine why we came back in this game two times and ran. The 35 yards down that sideline, right? Yeah. Now, you say we're guessing. Well, I don't really know whether that's a guess when they chase like this. Yeah. Somebody wasn't prepared. How about the club out over here? He doesn't really help me, does he? He, no. he? he got his helmet too far under it? Yep. Did you say that? It's coach to at the start of this. Center coming out knowing you're doing this, knowing you're motioning this guy across. Word release is what told me. It's a delayed call. I see they run it and just <laughs> Sam's over here. Okay. Okay, what's your tight end? Doesn't matter. Okay. Where's that center going? Is he automatically? I have Mike. Mike decoration. So he's here. Yeah. So even if he runs. 
Dallas Sam runs with your tight end man to man. Okay. I got Mike Decker. Doesn't change it. No. But your Mike really since Sam here, that your Mike Decker is still here. Even if in this look right now, we're exactly here. right. Would not matter to us. Wouldn't matter to us one one hour. Once we make a Mike declaration, that's the middle of those three. That's the guy we have. Now, because it's released, this is treated as buck off. So number two now is is belongs to the fullback. Now the center's going to the back safety. Yeah. The guy they're hunting to is the weak safety on the cut line. Again, have they got the quarterback dealt with here? No. Probably the safety to do. They're saying the safety's got him. You know that. Yeah, that's what he's the one that's Now, you see how hard this is for the fullback, but he's clearly got to go outside. Mm -hmm. He decided not to. In his mind, the guy was playing out. I'm not sure he's wrong. What he isn't right on is he never fit on one, right? Mm -hmm. And trying to fit through there, you know, he hasn't helped his runner. So this is part of what you face if you let him respot inside. Great cut lane by the left tackle. Yeah. Right there. That's it. Get up the field. I love that. You get yourself high. Probably what, four steps. Now, what do you think so? we tell his left guard after this play? Yes. Step arm or chop? Chop. Chop. Because he's got me. See, he's going to tackle me. Club technique? Yep. Good. Now, Coach, you were here coaching this outfit right here? Mm hmm. Number one belongs to the tight end. That's going to be 37. That makes 57 belong to the fullback. The center couldn't stay on him because the plugger came. Remember, you used to you were talking about getting from Florida State. Trouble. Great job, tight end on the back side, sifting from 94 to 26. Because once he could discover which one of those two, now the fullback is ready. The guy with the right guard is playing out. Oh, you going to go block 57 out there? Seven's blocked himself. Blocked himself. Don't fit up on something. Well, baby seven, probably, huh? Well, play football. Eight. Now, too many times they end up on nobody, and I don't like that shit. Let me tell you, you're going to spot now. You're going to be a searcher and, and search the system. Search now, the way you, the system is. Would you consider him, say you go back and that he okay. blocks 87, helps that backside guard with that? Did you do that? Is that, is that a good job for him? No matter to me. Just fit on somebody with exactly a double right. with a... Fit it, make that thing stay in that three, four, five, six category, yep. and away we go. This was a clear read for him because the guy with the right guard goes in, right? They just love Clearly huh? go out and take on the next level. Wow. I like that right tackle there. Boom. Does he finish it? I think where his arm is, he's going to. <clears throat> but maybe not. Back in and go a little bit wider. Fighting to lock that arm, we wouldn't. You guys, you guys didn't play Denver, right? You all played Denver, or? We played them last year. What do they do to you, knowing this is your, this is your deal, and then they do it? You guys are the two probably majors in it. What do they do to? to no, catch they around? didn't. When they played us, they, I think they didn't feel we had played really poorly the week before and had lost the game in Kansas City badly, and we went to them and we were like. Five and two, uh, playing pretty good, but we played poorly the week before, and they came out and kind of played pretty vanilla, eight-man fronts, and we just mauled them. And, and they weren't prepared. They just weren't prepared. What will you guys do like, when, when people come to you and say, what's the best to defend this? What's, you know? Well, what, what, what we're you? finding is they G the front side guard, and they three technique the back side guard, and that keeps the cutback lanes a little more restricted, okay? That is pretty vanilla. And then change up the fronts. And we see more bare front than anybody in football does. We, we see piles and piles of that. And as our passing game gets better, we're going to see less and less of that. And that's why we like to show pass out a gun and run this wide zone, because they, they go together. They fit together. So that we're trying to stay ahead of this as best we can. 
it's hard for teams that don't see this to suddenly get it. It's like old wishbone football. You know, mm -hmm. you know, suddenly it's on top of you, and you keep thinking you got an answer, and, and it ain't like that. It, it, it gets on you too fast. You know, we get you know, coach, our defense against us when we run this play, their their answer to defend us is to take it, play G, the, you know, under G, mm -hmm. and then take that will back or put him in a freaking A gap. Mm -hmm. and run everybody like a bunch of banshees. But they'll have no answer for us when we motion over and run force. They'll have no answer if we pull the ball on that end now. You know what I mean, Dan? When we, our defense defends us, they want to play over G, uh, under G defense, which is essentially, you know, putting everybody over there, then putting a three with a will inside, running the will, and they got too much defense for us. But they all have no answer for a pull. Well, that's what I do. Exactly right. I mean, that's None. We 